Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to Quick Tech Tips and Reviews. My name is Tony and with this channel we bring you guys a variety of tech related content. If this is your first time here, be sure to subscribe and hit that little bell down below so that you're alerted to when new content is being released. In today's video we're going to take a look at how to adopt a UBC G3 camera then take a few moments to explore the Unify video software. All right, guys, here we are inside of the Unify video software. Now this is running in Docker on my Synology NAS. I did a video recently on how to set that up and I'll put that link here up above if you're interested. Looking at this page here, you can see I have one UBC G3 camera. Now that's the camera that I set up a few weeks back in standalone mode. And again, I'll link to that video as well here if you're interested in seeing how that's done. But what we're gonna cover today is how to adopt or how to end up managing this camera in the Unify video software. So in the efforts of full disclosure, I did do a factory reset on this camera. Now, as you can see, the Unify video software has detected the camera automatically, but it's in a link state of unmanaged. Now, to get this software to manage this particular camera, all we have to do is click on the camera here in the list when the pane pops up on the right hand side, we're in a manage screen. We're going to come down and we're going to click on the blue manage button. And there you go. The camera changed from a status of unmanaged to a status of connected. And you can see here we have a connected status. We have a green connected status light. If we come over here to the uh, list, we have a green status slide here along with some other information about the camera. Our link state is 100 megabits per second, no recording info, and the recording type is set to none by default. Now, we also can go into the live feed mode and just forewarning you that when I do this, we're going to start to get some feedback and some repetition delay. So I'm going to immediately disable the microphone to eliminate that. So let's go here. Okay. Now that the microphone's been disabled, we could look at a couple of the other settings. So from the live screen view, we can pop up into full screen mode. Although I have not been able to get this to work. Then we have some other settings here, brightness, contrast, U, et cetera. And you could also, um, if you make any changes, set it back to uh, reset all back to the defaults. You can take a snapshot of what's on the screen currently. So if we open that up, there you go. There's the snapshot of what the live view is looking at. And then finally here, we can adjust the um, resolution to high, medium, and low, and by default, it's set to automatic. Now, you'll notice that once I disable the microphone, the little microphone icon is gone. The only way to re-enable the microphone is to actually set the camera back to factory defaults. So that being said, uh, we're not going to do that right now. The, uh, the other option you have is the zoom. You can zoom in. In the live in the live mode as well so we're going to close out the live mode now and look at some of the other settings so over here in the right pane we have some of the camera information including the firmware version the uptime um, if we look over here we have four tabs so let's look at each tab um, individually from left to right so we have the video tab and under resolution, we have the option to override suggested settings. So you can actually turn that on and then you can tweak the resolution and the bit rate and a couple other settings as well. The on-screen display, you have an override message. You have a timestamp overlay and a watermark overlay. So in the lower right hand corner of the live view screen, I don't know if you can see it right here. There's a ubiquity um, logo. You can actually turn that off. If I save that, you'll see that the logo is gone. For now, I'm just gonna leave it on. Okay, and there it's back. And then under the accessories, you can just enable the external accessory. And I'm assuming that's the um, IR extender to increase the, the night vision. Now, as far as the recording tab, 
under configuration you have a couple of different modes you have record mode right now it's set to don't record you could always record 24 7. you can record it only on motion triggers and then you can record on schedule i'm going to leave it set to don't record for right now then under motion detection you can set motion zones so basically you can uh, set zones on the live view so that you can tell the camera you know don't record this tree that's waving in the wind etc we're not going to do that in this video now but just know that you can set zones uh, for motion detection then you have a couple other settings here you have a minimum motion event trigger and end motion event delay so what these two guys are they i believe are a scale of one to ten this is um how long the can the motion has to occur before the event will trigger recording the end motion is how long uh how many seconds have to elapse so the camera knows that the motion has end before the motion has ended i think i said that correctly and then here you have your seconds to record before and seconds to record after so it's always a good idea to set a couple of seconds before and set a couple of seconds after so you can capture um, your the, the proper footage that you want under status you just have your cpu uh, memory network and uh, disk information and then under manage you see here you have your ip address your name the controller settings the port information for the controller and then under unmanage you can actually choose to unmanage the camera and then once it's unmanaged i believe you have the option to have the controller forget the camera as well now looking over onto the left side here you have a map screen where you can import a map of your site or your house or whatever and help you with planning out the layout of your cameras you actually have a live view here and you can edit the view here i'm not exactly sure to be honest with you okay layout that's there we go one camera four cameras so it again i guess it all depends on the number of cameras you have i wasn't sure at first what it meant by editing the live view but it's just picking your your layout for your cameras okay so we'll just leave that set to one for now revert whatever okay oh there's your different options here choose a layout okay and then you have your timeline which is in beta and i guess you can just scrub through in the timeline format of the recordings haven't played with that yet and then here you have uh i'm assuming your recordings are going to appear here so let's test that out let's go back into the cameras and let's change the recording mode from don't record to um always record and we'll say save okay so now i'm assuming if we go back into recording mode we'll start to see recordings appear there you go and once you have a list of recordings here i guess you have different filters you can filter by day by week by month um, times you can select the different cameras in this case we only have the one camera you can choose the type of recordings motion or full-time recordings and then you can look at locked recordings and unlocked recordings and basically the difference between locked and unlocked recordings if the recording is locked you cannot delete it if it's unlocked an administrator can delete the recording okay if we come down to the alert screen i'm assuming any uh, system alerts will appear here you have your user information here and then under settings i guess are your um, overall system settings and you can download the config current configuration of the controller and let's see you have your you can connect this to your cloud which we may do in another video um, if i decide to do a video on um, how to access the nvr uh, remotely you have your camera settings and your camera uh, retrieval password which you can change here your alerts you can set this up to send you email alerts you can ch have it check for firmware updates uh, automatically if you prefer if not you can turn that off device discovery yep discover cameras etc so um, that's about it for today guys just a quick overview of the unify software i haven't really played too much with it 
but it uh, looks like a pretty nice piece of software. So if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Be sure to check out some of my other videos up above. Please remember to subscribe, like, and share. And use those Amazon affiliate links. It doesn't change your price, but it does help out the channel. My name is Tony with Quick Tech Solutions. As always, thank you for watching. See you next time.